Does anyone on Bigger Pockets actually own their own properties? That's an interesting question. Let's discuss. All right, y'all, welcome to the show. I am your host, Jay Wise, and we're answering real estate questions that you're asking. You're asking me, you're asking the internet. Sometimes I even answer questions that I didn't even see you asked, but you, you sons of bitches should have been asking them, right? Today's pretty interesting one. I like this one. It's from this dude, Carl uh, Cooper. Several weeks ago, I posted on BP asking for advice from actual property owners in the Cleveland area, Euclid specifically, about their experiences with local property managers. I never received a single response from an actual property owner. Just self-promotions from property management companies or people affiliated with property management companies. Are there no actual owners on bigger pockets? I like that. I like that question, bro. That's a good question because we've got to talk about this, right? First of all, Carl, you got to understand what bigger pockets is. And this doesn't have anything to do with uh, the city of Cleveland, right? It could be, or the city of Euclid, which is what you're more specifically talking to. You're going to see this on bigger pockets no matter what. You could be like, yo, where are the property owners in Detroit? Where are the property owners in Indianapolis? Where are the property owners in Portland? Like, yo, I got a rental property in Portland. I need somebody to help me out. I need, I got a rental property in Los Angeles. I need somebody to help me out, right? I got a rental property in fucking Timbuktu. I need somebody to, you know, help me out, okay? Doesn't matter where the property is that you're asking that question, okay? You go on a place like Bigger Pockets, or honestly, even Bigger Pockets itself, not even that relevant here. You go anywhere. You go on a Facebook group for investors. You grow on Instagram, right? You go on Reddit, right? You go anywhere, okay? You're asking that question, dude, what do you expect? What kind of answer do you think you get, right? You take bigger pockets, right? Uh, some of those other examples would make sense too. What is bigger pockets, right? It's a forum for real estate investing, okay? There's only going to be two kinds of people on that website, brother, because there's only going to be two kinds of people that spending time on that website makes any damn sense, brother. Option one, the first kind of person on a bigger pockets or any other type of uh, of website like this, right, is going to be people like you, complete newbies, somebody who's brand new to the real estate business, you're brand new to investing, and you're looking for help. You're looking for something. You're looking for some type of assistance getting your real estate business started, right? Those are people that are going to be posting on Bigger Pockets. You need something in regards to real estate, Bigger Pockets is the place where you'd want to post that, right? Yeah, obviously. It's a big-ass network, social network of real estate investors. And then that brings me to the second kind of person, the kind of person that's not new, the kind of person that's experienced, the kind of person that has things, knows what they are doing. What are they looking for? They're looking for the first person. They're looking for people like that so they could sell that person something, right? So you're either looking for information or services, or you're looking to sell your information or your services. And then you're going to get people on bigger pockets. You know, they might not even need you specifically when you ask the question directly. They might not even be interested in directly selling you something, but they'll take the piece of content that you put out there is an opportunity for them to stand on the stage, the audience, right, that is the bigger pocket stage, that's a website where a ton of real estate investors are going to go, and they could demonstrate their knowledge, their value proposition to the audience based off of what you said, right? Kind of similar to this video, right? And they're able to go out there and do that and project out there to the general public, what they bring to the table so other new people, not necessarily you, but other new people like you that would be looking for a service or a product that they can offer would be interested in it. Why would anybody other than those two kinds of people spend any time on a real estate website? Like You don't really think, bro, that there's going to be guys and girls out there that bought rental properties and they're just going to go on this website like and just spend hours and hours just answering your questions for no reason other than they just like want to be your friend or something like what do you think this is bro this is this is the real world bro you ain't going on here to fucking make friends people are on that website to make money 
right? You're on the website to make money. You're like, I'm not selling anything. I'm not there to make money. Yes, you are. You're looking for like service and training. You're looking to get better, get information about your real estate business so you could make money at your real estate business. You're there to make money. Everybody responding is there to make money. They're there to sell something, product, service themselves, right? Whether you or somebody else, right? That's what they're there for. If there is no money, bro, there is no website. There is no traffic. There is no reason for somebody to be there. So it is not shocking to me that the only types of people that are responding to you are people that are selling something, right? If you go on a website like that, and again, it doesn't have to be bigger pockets. It could be like a Facebook group about real estate investing. Hell, it don't even have to be about the real estate industry, right? If you're like a freaking, you know, I don't know, fucking baker or fucking farmer or fucking dude selling dream catchers on Etsy, and there's like this sweet form about how to make a big, dream catcher Etsy fucking business, right? Same thing. You're going to run into the same stuff. People who need information and people who are trying to sell that, right? You either need something or you're selling something, man. You either need info, product, service, or you need customers, man. Everybody's just doing that for money, right? Nobody's out there out of the kindness of their heart just giving a lot of value to you. Now, you'll get people, and this is especially true on a website like Bigger Pockets. you'll get people that are out there giving and they're giving a lot and they're saying they got nothing to sell. Ooh, you got to be nervous. Yeah, you got to be. You got to be very, very skeptical of those people. If they're out there and they're pretending they don't got nothing to sell, ooh, they're looking at for the long game, and they're gonna try to really get their hooks in you and sell you something later. I'll tell you that. I like the people that go out there and they're pretty blatant about it. They're like, "Yeah, motherfucker, I'm here to make money, dog. I got value. I'm willing to give it." in exchange for money. That's fine. That's what you should expect, right? So, Carl, to, to put a bow on this, you really, really, really should be very skeptical if you finally do find this person you're looking for who's got nothing to sell. That person just wants to give you all this information on how to grow your business, bro. You, you, really, you really think that that is legit? I don't think so, brother. Instead, pay attention to what the people who, yes, they do have something to sell, but the things they have to sell could really grow your business, and at least they're being upfront about it, and you should really pay attention to those people. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.